think it may be a typical pattern now that I kind of start Monday mornings with this song. But I just love this old hymn. Um, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Here salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. become a regular Monday morning tradition. I just love starting the week thinking about that song, that this is my story, this is my song. And maybe it's a reminder to us that our life is no longer our own. Our life is Christ. He is our Lord. He's our master. And all of this week needs to be given over to him. But this morning we're in Galatians chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. Uh, through verse 10, and tomorrow we'll conclude the book of Galatians, and then we'll go right into the book of Ephesians, so if you want to know where we're headed uh, next week, or actually Wednesday of this week, we'll start in the book of Ephesians, and just walk through that book together in our quiet times, our devotion in the morning. Um, Paul is is wrapping up, and, and I, it's, it's kind of it's kind of odd to me in one sense that he throws this particular subject in at the end of chapter 6, um, but he reminds these Galatians uh, the same thing that he's he's repeated to um, Timothy when he wrote to, first, wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy, and he wrote to the church in Corinth, I think in verse 9, somewhere in there. 
that he reminds them of this principle of sowing and reaping. And there's a broad principle to that, but there's a particular application what he's talking about this morning. He begins in verse 6 by saying, Let the one who has taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Now, it, it can be self-serving because I'm the one who reaps the benefits or my support comes from the giving of God's people um, to support me. But it's a biblical principle, not only for, for me, but other pastors. Uh, there's the principle that the provision, or not the principle, there's a command, really, that the provision, financial provision, is given over to those who God has called to elder, to pastor, to shepherd, who teach God's word. And um, so he says, let the one who is taught the word share all good things with those who teaches. Again, he, he reminds Timothy of this. He repeats it in 1 Corinthians. And so he, he uses this analogy in verse 7, as he does in 1 Timothy and 1 Corinthians. He says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one sows to his own flesh will reap from flesh, uh, will reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Now, again, this is a broad principle of sowing and reaping. But the generalization here is that if we sow in, if we put seed in, or in this particular case, if we give our, our resources uh, to those things that feed the Spirit, that will we also reap. But if we sow our resources into those things that gratify the flesh, we'll reap that, and there's destruction in that. And so that general principle applies to so many different areas of our lives that wherever we are making an investment, whether it be a monetary investment, an investment of time, really any investment of our resources, when we invest that into things of the Spirit, things that are pertaining to the kingdom of God, then from that we'll also reap. There are spiritual reapings in that. Those spiritual reapings may not always come uh, in, in monetary means, uh, but they, they can come in so many different varied ways. We often tend to have the materialistic idea that everything is related to the material world, when in reality some of the greatest blessings of God are not in material nature at all, but they are in those things that are of the Spirit, uh, in God's economy, if you will. Um, so we can apply that, again, in every year of our life. If we sow, if we invest our resources into those things that only gratify the flesh, then from that we'll only reap fleshly um, fulfillments, and, and those don't fulfill at all. I'm reminded again of what Jesus said, don't store it for yourselves treasure on earth where rust and moth come in and they decayed that. Rather, store up your treasures in heaven. And that tells us that, that we need to have an eternal perspective. It's hard sometimes to keep an eternal perspective in mind because, my goodness, we live in this material surrounding but that which is of value are eternal things, not temporal things. There's nothing wrong with enjoying temporal things. My goodness, I enjoy music, and so I have some instruments that I use to play that music with. Um, God has given us all good gifts. Uh, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. I, I enjoy gardening. I enjoy those natural elements in gardening. Um, all of these things God has given us as blessings. The question is, do they possess us or do we possess them? And so we want to sow those things to the Spirit. Um, I think of our time. Uh, better sown um, in, in investing our, our minds and our energies in the Word of God, our, our energies in pouring into others, discipling others, uh, serving others than sitting back and filling our mind with with stuff that may be on that square box in front of us or scrolling through social media feeds. In other words, where, where we invest our time will determine what we reap. It's a biblical principles. 
principle. Where we sow, we will certainly reap. And so the question for me and for you is, where am I sowing my resources? Um, back, back to this passage in sharing uh, with those who teach us the Word of God. Paul uses in 1 Timothy and 1 Corinthians 6 that, that phrase where he repeats in the Old Testament, do not muzzle out the ox while it's treading out the grain. And what would happen would be when, when they were treading the grain, in other words, separating the chaff from the wheat, they would put ox in the, uh, or tether them to the, to, the, to the circle where they would walk around, and the ox walking on that grain would separate the grain from the chaff. And they would not put a muzzle on the ox because the muzzle would keep the ox from eating as it was treading out the grain. So he's saying, listen, don't muzzle the ox while it's treading out the grain. Don't prevent that ox from eating. And so it's the same principle there in our giving and our support of those who uh, who labor in, in teaching the Word of God, teaching us spiritual things, that there should be um, plenty for them to provide for their needs. Now, there can be and there is... Ashamedly, in the in the church and the body of Christ, uh, particularly those who are televangelists, that type of thing, where they where they uh, take advantage of God's people and they exploit God's people, and unfortunately that happens. So my encouragement to you would be um, that that wherever you are giving, uh, I, I, the principle I think is that we give first to that local church where we belong. Uh, but there's not that's not an ironclad. Uh, you may have a portion that you give somewhere else. That's that's up to God to lead you how to do that, not to not for me. Um, but be careful what you're sowing into. Um, if you're giving to another ministry, make sure that they are preaching and teaching the the true gospel, and that those resources are being used to further the kingdom, not to embellish somebody else's lifestyle um, so just be wise and be and be uh, cautious with that verse 9 he encourages them and let us not grow weary in doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up I like to use the phrase in my mind a lot of times in in doing good because it's easy to get weary in doing good it's easy to get weary and continuing, 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 and sometimes we don't see the results. Keep your hands to the plow. I really like to apply that to the whole Christian life, um, to keep my hands to the plow. Keep plowing. I may not see the results today, um, but as he says here, don't give up, for in due time you will reap a harvest. So whatever it is that you're involved in and ministering, serving to others, you may not see the immediate results. Keep your hands to the plow and keep plowing. Steady as she goes, right? Um, it's like a marathon race. You don't see the finish line right away. It's, it's a long and arduous process, but there is the finish line where we will reap the benefits of that. Verse 10, So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Um, the body of Christ was designed by God for encouragement and exhortation of one another. And so here he exhorts these believers, continue to do good, especially to those who are in the household of faith. Now that doesn't mean that we're to ignore those who are not believers, who are not a part of the body of Christ. My goodness, we're to serve, we're called to love our neighbor regardless of who that neighbor is, whether they're saved or unsaved. But there is a benefit, if you will, uh, of being a part of a local church body and serving one another. One of the striking things that that I see here at First Conyers, it was evident to Sandy and I, even before I became a pastor here, where we were just members of this church body, that this church body cared for each other. And primarily where we see it happening is where people are connected into a small group or a discipling type of relationship. And it's in those places that we that we meet one another's 
um, that we meet one another's um, needs, if you will. Um, and if you're not connected into a small group, into some type of discipling group, let me tell you, you've got to get connected into that. Um, not so that you can be served, but so that you can serve others. I, 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 I you know, People probably get tired. Of, and most everybody that watches me on or joins with me in the devotion of the morning is probably connected into a small group. But find somebody who's not connected into a small group and invite them to become a part of that small group that you're connected into. Um, bring them close to the fire so that they can be warm through those embers. I, I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you today. I pray that God would use you to plant a seed of the gospel in somebody's heart or to cultivate a seed that's already been planted somewhere. Or if God would so grace us by being able to participate while he saved somebody today, man, wouldn't that make the day? I pray the Lord's blessings on you, that he would keep you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. I want to encourage you to share this on your Facebook feed, if you will, um, so that others might be encouraged through the Word of God. So just click that share button right now. I love you. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Have a great day.